Russia's intervention in Ukraine has resulted in the US and the EU sanctioning some of the most influential Russian and Ukrainian individuals. If you're confused about how we got here, you're not alone. Let's go back and review the events that led to today's situation. After months of peaceful protests in Kyiv, a violent clash that resulted in at least 88 deaths shook the streets of the Ukrainian capital. After two days of violence, a peace deal was brokered with the Ukrainian government. However, instead of staying to implement the deal, former Ukrainian President Yanukovych fled to Russia, leaving behind his opulent residence and a trail of corruption. With an overwhelming majority, the Ukrainian parliament, including Yanukovych's own party, voted to remove him from office and create a new government with the goal of holding presidential elections in May 2014. On February 27th, Russia orchestrated a military incursion into Crimea, taking over Ukrainian government buildings and facilities, including airports, military bases, and radio and television stations. Under the shadow of 20,000 Russian troops, an illegal referendum was hastily pulled together in Crimea, declaring the peninsula independent from Ukraine. The so-called referendum was immediately condemned by the international community. On March 17, the United States announced economic sanctions against several senior officials in the Kremlin, leaders of the Duma, former Ukrainian officials, and Crimean separatist leaders involved in undermining the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence of Ukraine. Since then, new sanctions have been issued on businessmen from President Putin's inner circle, Bank Russia, which is operated as a personal bank for members of this inner circle, more Crimean separatist leaders and former Ukrainian officials, and an energy company that misappropriated Ukrainian state assets. Several of the sanctioned individuals belong to the oligarch class, the richest few who have enjoyed the largest share of the profits from Russia's oil and gas boom. Some of these individuals have business networks that stretch throughout the world. Sanctions may place a major strain on their fortunes. Their assets are frozen in the US. They're restricted from conducting personal business in the US. Their companies may also suffer significant losses as businesses in Europe and around the world consider the risk involved and seek financial opportunities elsewhere. As the sanctions continue, the repercussions will spread beyond these individuals and their businesses. Their support for Russia's actions in Ukraine may come at a price higher than the Russian people can bear. So that's how we got here. What comes next? Russia still has a choice. Russia can de-escalate and help resolve this crisis peacefully without more unnecessary hardship for the Russian and Ukrainian people. The Kremlin can choose to cease its aggressive acts. Or it can continue down this negative path further isolating Russia from the rest of the world. The choice is clear.